know, people like Pastor Bradley grew up without his parents. You guys are here for me. I'm going to show some value and appreciation. Now, we're talking about the kids with their parents, right? Are we? Or are we talking about us with our parents? <laughs> the least I can do. The least I can do is take out the garbage. <laughs> That's the least I can do. <laughs> Clean up the room. <laughs> That's the least I can do. <laughs> the least I can do. Right? Just to show value and appreciation. So you don't have to ask me, God. <laughs> I do it just because I love you. I'm not taking it for granted. This... This, this, this air I breathe costs money. It costs you your life. Ooh, the sickness and disease that I'm not carrying right now, that costs you something. Stripes. So I could be healed. So the least I can do. <laughs> For what you've afforded me. See, now, if I'm thinking like that, when do I have time to criticize or to judge people's imperfections? I'm so busy being a disciple. See, I'm getting my thirst quenched to being a disciple, not getting my thirst quenched from validating myself by pointing out others' misgivings and, and when they're off. The person that you're offended with this week, or the person that maybe said the wrong thing, or maybe have overlooked you. The person that maybe have overlooked you or said the wrong thing, or you thought they should have been there for you. Did you check their disciple status? Come on. So are you offended because they're not a disciple? Because they're not loving people? Because they're not sharing the gospel? Is that, what, is that why you're upset? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Probably wasn't in line with the category. All right. So your, your mate that you got upset with this week, is it because they weren't being a disciple? <laughs> is, that, is that why you got upset? Because they don't want to share the gospel. They don't love nobody else, the other people. They're not ministering to nobody. And you're like, you just need to get it together. Right? Is that why you got upset? Oh, or because they wasn't making you comfortable. So you gave your life for them. You laid down your life. You took stripes. The chastisement of their peace was upon you. I just felt that one right there. That one, that one kind of, I kind of felt that right in my leg. <laughs> right? All right, so, 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 oh, let's get back focus here. All right. <laughs> All right, so, so, people that take things for granted are limited to what we call hindsight. Because um, they have blind spots. Like, they, see, again, they're taking it for granted because they ain't paying attention. Because it's of no value to them. See, why they're not paying attention? Because, see, pay, not paying attention, there's a version of not paying attention where I see it and I'm ignoring it. But then there's a version of not paying attention is I don't even see it. Because it's clouded. It's in my blind spot. Mm -hmm. Well, how did we get in my blind spot? We talked about this on a Friday, right, in group. Mm -hmm. Because I've consumed myself with so much of the world, world, I haven't taken in the word that's light. So I can't even see. Mm -hmm. But I think I do. So the last argument, was it based on your clarity and soundness of mind? <laughs> so you're upset because, man, I've been soaking up so much word, I see so clear, and I need them to see. Where's your confidence coming from? Your word time? Oh, okay. Excuse me for getting all in your house. All right, so... <laughs> All right, so, so a disciple maximizes the moments. They take nothing for granted. A disciple, a, disciple, a disciple doesn't mix personal pain into their passion for people. See, so, so, so sometimes we're supposed to have a passion for people, but we're, it's, uh, it's uh, limited because we're mixing in our personal pain, the things that we've gone through. Um, you have to recognize something that our life doesn't stop with us. 
So, so when we go through things and we decide to stop in that moment and soak up our personal pain, it can be at the expense of having passion for people. So you can be stuck in your own world, right? At the expense of loving, moving, and taking care of other people's lives, right? Yes. Right? So, so I, okay, this, this may bother you just a little bit, but it's okay. You know, God will heal you. Because <laughs> if you soak in your pain today, your children will duplicate it tomorrow. See, because everything you're sharing with them is contaminated by your own personal pains and selfishness. Amen. You good? Like I was talking to somebody this week, just had a breakfast with, with, a, with a husband, and we were talking. And he said, man, he says, you know, I don't want to be uh, irritating or controlling. He says, so, so I work to make sure it comes across very soft. He says, so I'm suppressing what I'm really thinking. Like, I, it's stuff I want to share, but I'm holding it back. I said, but it's in you then, right? I said, so even though it's in you and even though your words came out as soft as butter, they still have what's in you bled into them. So it's still received with the same, it's still contaminated. Based on what you're storing. See, that's why you can't soak in their personal... The disciple doesn't soak in their personal pain because it'll affect them ministering to others. We, y'all still here with me? Y'all good? Amen. You're talking about being disciples, right? See, because we can get past our selfishness. We can get past, you know, uh, trying to validate ourselves by looking at others' imperfections. Well, you can't do this. So now I feel better about me being less than because I found somebody less than me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Who does that? Like, you know, I'm looking to, to, to find the weakest amount of people I can hang around so I feel like I'm on top. Right? That doesn't make sense, right? So we were talking earlier, right? And I was saying that uh, the goal is not for you to, for people to highlight you to be uh, better than they are. It's for you to be the best you. I said, so you have some people will kind of make you comfortable at being better than everyone else or or look like you stand out better than everybody else but then you have some people that will challenge you to be the best you right that's what you want now the person that challenges you to be the best you they're they're presenting themselves as a living sacrifice because there's not a whole lot of people on their team so so they could be tempted to give up on you like well i don't want no flack and i'm good (laughs) if i'm gonna get flack do whatever you want to do but they have to be willing to deal with the heat of opposition to give you what you need. Everybody may not understand. Everybody may not see this greatness, but I'm going to stay with this person until they become great. They will see. So I'll deal with the heat to give you what you need. See, no greater love than, than this than a man has for his friend. He'll lay down his light for his friend. Might not be liked, but I love you. Now we're now we talking discipleship. But am I only going to talk to people if I'm comfortable? If, it's, if everybody's excited about what I got to say? So we can just change the church from a God church to an accommodating church. No, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Well, people do that all the time. Oh, just uh, that's fine. It's no big deal. You know, God doesn't have any standards. It's just whatever you do is cool. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Well, what's one of a little bit of that here? A little bit of this there? What's the big deal? I'm not trying to hurt nobody. Was that an option? At least I ain't killing nobody. Oh, so thank God today you decided not to take a life. <laughs> I, didn't know you, I didn't know you was in the murdering business. <laughs> so you're giving yourself props because you ain't killed nobody. Was, you, was that like, is that your purpose? Or you're giving yourself props because you were nice today. As opposed to what? <laughs> what was the other option? <laughs> And so you give yourself a pass for, for breathing? Because that's just like breathing. Yeah, so you know, hey, I could have not breathed today. But I took some breaths. Check. That's what we're doing when we say, I was nice. I, at least I didn't hurt 
anyone. You're hurting people all the time if you're not fulfilling what you purpose to do in this life. Yeah. Somebody's struggling and suffering, waiting for you to get in your rightful position. All creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They need you on that wall. Amen. They do. I had a conversation with a young man who came out to visit. And he pretty much was saying that. He was like, okay, I know I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm in the process of doing it. But guess what? I don't need you doing what I'm doing. <laughs> So, Pastor Keith, I know this might sound like a hypocrite, but I need you on that wall. When, when I kick up out my funk, I need to know somebody's on the wall. So, if I show up at a club and I see you in the club, the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, who's on the wall? Who's on the wall? If you're in here with me, who's on the wall? You know, some people think that about you. Okay, if you with me. <laughs> it's like a guy showed up, right, hanging out down here with us. Like, okay, so if you down here, <laughs> who's taking care of the power? <laughs> when, I, when I bind things on earth, the Bible says that heaven is backing me up. Who, who's up there to, to back me up? <laughs> you mean I'm out here on my own? You understand what I'm saying? That's why we need disciples. People, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Right. Well, people are in their right fit, people get excited. Because somebody's in the spot. Somebody's in the pocket. It's confidence. It's like, you know, I always share this when me and my son played together. My son was phenomenal. Why? He got dad with him. You see what I'm saying? He's rolling with dad with him. What is that saying? He's like, well, even if I mess up, I got dad. <laughs> you know, so, hey, I'm just fire him up. Worst case scenario, dad got it covered. Right? So, so, it's, so somebody is like, worst case scenario, I, they got my back. Minister Lamar got my back. Somebody's saying, worst case scenario, at least Trey, Trey going to help me out. If it get crazy, I can go to Minister Ty. Can they? That's the question. All right. So, so again, uh, the scripture says this, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Now, that plenty of harvest is, the Bible says, uh, and let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Uh, I guess my, modern technology has its benefits. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, verse 9. It says, look, but I have not seen, um, it says, no ear heard, nor neither enter into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for us. Uh, for them that love them, love him. But God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches uh, all things, yet the deep things of God. Now, how does that line up? See, the harvest is plenteous. That plenteous harvest is the things that God has prepared for us. See, because I'm designed for something. I'm, I'm designed to fulfill a purpose. And, and, and what I'm designed for has a harvest attached to it. Right? So every time I facilitate what I'm supposed to do on purpose, lives are changed. See, so the harvest is plenteous, but the labor is a few. The people that are preparing to fulfill their purpose and impact lives. The harvest is plenteous, but the disciples are few. I can't get people to be disciples. I get people to maybe acknowledge God. God's real. Okay. Then I get people that decide, I'm going to go to church. <laughs> I'm going to church. I've been to church. Yeah, I go to church. I'm a member of such and such church. But can I get some disciples? Can I, can I, get, can I get some disciples? Can I get some laborers for the harvest? Because there's many, the harvest is plenteous. Thanks for tuning into Ayers TV. The completion of this video or entire audio can be accessed at our website at www. H-E-I-R-S-C-C dot org or on Airs CCC channel, YouTube, and Airs Radio via SoundCloud and iTunes. Donations can be given at our website. Thank you. Remember, at Airs, we believe we're just what you prayed for.